welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty when no wait a minute let's see if I can just uh, let's see if I can get this video to work when will I be YouTube famous I don't know probably tomorrow love you Angie that was the ever so beautiful Jessica singing of course the 4F Beauty intro when will I be YouTube famous I don't know probably never although Jessica has a slightly different view on when that will happen so hopefully you are watching me in black and white uh, because this is the continuation of the photo inspiration collaboration series and if I'd known that the series was going to take off the way it did I would have chosen a much shorter tagline for it but who knew so as you can tell as if you haven't already seen from the thumbnail the title and if you've read it to the description the beautiful Jessica popping in the way she did that's who I'm subscribing with subscribing with collabing with oh lord I need to go and get a very large coffee because clearly the, the two and a half hours sleep I got last night it's not enough oh, oh sorry as I was saying the beautiful Jessica collabing with me on this one this is I think our third round together so if you want to see exactly what the photo is that has inspired our looks and you want to see exactly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor my friend you have the best seat in the house grab a drink grab a snack get comfy because here it comes hey welcome back from the intro right hopefully that intro was in black and white I'm gonna have to wiggle already hang on struggling with pain the last few days folks the weather doesn't know what it's doing one day it's it's clear and bright and dry and the next day it's overcast and damp which anybody with arthritis knows what that means <laughs> anyway this is the continuation of my photo inspiration series if I swallow a lot or sound a bit weird this time I've actually managed to bust a tooth so I have a sharp piece of tooth digging in my tongue I'm trying to not ignore it and work around it but if I do sound tad weird or swallow a little bit more than I usually do that, that's why right as I said continuation of my photo inspiration series if you've never watched this before basically myself and another person use exactly the same photo for the inspiration for our makeup look the only rules are you can only use the colors in the picture you can't add them in if they're not already there and you don't have to use all the colors I don't believe in oh, sorry two hours sleep a night is catching up with me I don't believe in complicated rules. The picture I've put up here. And as you can see, it is the Norskin, or the Northern Lights. It's beautiful, isn't it? I've got a picture of it on my phone, obviously, because I'm waving it thin air right now. The magic of the movies. <laughs> um, I mean, this, this basically is the perfect picture for me because it's green, purple, teal, 
blue. A little flash of pink. The trees look black and the snow at the bottom, on my monitor at least, looks like a pale bluey grey. So, is anybody surprised that I'm going to be reaching for this? This is my absolute favourite palette, full stop. If I could only have one palette, it would be this one. Above all my Jeffree Stars, above all my Anastasias, this. This is me in a palette, basically. So, I am going to zoom you in. And then I'm going to talk you through, as I usually do, the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. Now, I am a training channel, which means my films are longer than most people's because I don't cut things out. So, if that bugs you, or you can blend quicker than me because of my chronic, chronic pain, blending, not always as quick as I'd like, uh, there's a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it because... Sweetie, I'm not even going to know unless you tell me. Right, now, I've got deep set eyes, which a lot of people mistakenly believe or are mistakenly informed they have hooded lids. Because we suffer the same sort of thing, we get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. Um, we get... Oh, Jess, I am so sorry I keep yawning through this. Right, we get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease, we have to cut onto the upper lid, not just the socket. And even using glitter glue, we'll get a bare patch right in the middle there. Let me show you why. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight forward, and you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid I wonder how many yawns I'm going to have to cut out today. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line all or part of your mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow anybody's tutorial. Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and just sketch out on your static lid where you need your crease to be. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. Just do, use slightly smaller brushes than I do and you'll be absolutely fine. Now, deep set eyes sometimes they're referred to as double lidded eyes if i cover the mobile lid and close my eye you can see i've got as much lid again that folds back away and if i cover the static lid and close my eye you can see again i've got lid space there that tucks back in and it's those two bits of the lid rubbing together that gives us the issue of the transference and it's why people feel they have hooded lids when they actually haven't. The way we deal with that is when you're putting a colour through your crease just every so often sit back, relax your brows and just make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it above your crease there. It really is that simple. Right enough waffling. Let's see if I can stop yawning for five minutes. Put some colour on, shall we? I'm going in with this Soeco lip brush initially. I'm going into the Hasina 2 and I'm initially going to go in with, I think, Mahia. 
because I'm going to do something a little different today. So I'm just drawing this in with my eye relaxed. I can be sure that I can see. I'm really not fussed about it going onto the, the lid there because I'm doing something totally different. Right, now to try and do the same this side. This is the worst bit, trying to get them to be even. Because of course your eyes are not symmetrical unless you photoshop them like James Charles. So you may have to do slightly different shapes to get the same effect both sides, like so. Right, I've got a little microfiber cloth here that I'm going to use for cleaning my brushes off with. Um, I used to use a colour switch. I've since found that a microfiber cloth is far gentler on your brushes. So I prefer to use that. Right, let's grab myself a pencil brush. This is a Studio 5 London pencil brush, and you can see it's still it's it's got a bit of movement, but it's it's still a bit bit stiffer which is what we want. So I'm going to go back into Mahia which is the colour I've just sketched out with. I'm going to very lightly just make the line a tad thicker. Well on. So, Jessica. I have known Jessica for quite a while now. Now I've thickened the line up, I'm just, just going to do some little tiny circular movements. Just to buff the edge and soften it a bit for the next colour that I'm going to add in. I first discovered Jessica, it was after I'd put up my um, How Many Eyeshadow Palettes Did I Have film because unless you're a create, creator you probably wouldn't know this but when you put a film up with specific tags on it you will get very similar films in your recommended to watch list so I was seeing a lot of people's eyeshadow collections and this one popped up saying 1400 palettes and I'm like no surely not surely that's a typo surely she means like 140 or 400 or something no she meant 1400 <laughs> so uh, the first video of hers that I watched all I saw was her hands and heard her voice because it was this going through the drawers and everything and it was almost like being at a, a, a department store she had so many different palettes and it was amazing um, and what I did like because I used to think it was just me that did this all of my palettes I mean this one is so well used and yet to look at it it doesn't look that well used unless you see start to see the sort of the, the dimples in it where I've used certain shades a lot. Um, because I always clean my palettes before I put them away. Because if I pick up a palette that's dirty or where the shades have sort of 
fluffed across on the cardboard. I don't feel as inspired to use it. It needs to look like a brand new untouched palette. And I noticed that all of her palettes, even her most used ones, were like mine. They were super, super clean. And I'm just like, finally, someone that's like me. Um, and I fell in love with her personality. Then I started to watch some of her films and I'm like, ooh, she likes colour. This is awesome. I've just realised I look like I've got a pair of antlers or something. Oh. <clears throat> so yeah, I um, absolutely fell in love with her voice. And then started watching her films and was like, oh my god, she likes colour like me. Like, this is a Morphe M562. And I'm going to go into, uh, initially I'm going to go into Re, which is a unique shade in my collection. And I'm going to use this to buff this edge here. I don't normally go right up to my brows, but for today I am, because I want more a more editorial pow look, you know. So yeah, um, absolutely fell in love with the looks that she was doing. Um, and I think I subscribed after the, the second or third video of hers that I'd watched. Um, I watched quite a lot of Swedish YouTubers. I'm not sure if I was Swedish in a previous life <clears throat> or if it's just that British YouTubers appeal to me because they all seem to use such beautiful colours. They're not scared of colour. Maybe it's because they see the northern lights and everything and they're more inspired by, you know, the, the world around them than we are. But I love the fact that they don't just, you know, you, you don't have to use a brown as your transition colour. You can't for this one because there's no browns in the picture, so... Um, and it's just, I absolutely fell in love with her. And then I found out she's actually a trained makeup artist and a professional bowler and works in finance in Sweden. And I'm like, this girl's pretty damn amazing. But on top of all that, she's actually a really nice person too. When I asked if she wanted to subscribe, I was like, uh, to collab rather. I was like, oh, I don't know whether she's going to say yes or not. And she was absolutely up for it. And I'm like, oh, well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I was super, super happy about that. I still am super, super happy about that. I love collabing with her. Right, I'm going to go into Erin, which is the lightest of the matte greens. Just for this element here. As I said, I'm going a lot more editorial with this look than I usually do. If you want to do a more blended version of this, then you do whatever you feel more comfortable with. But that being said, sometimes an editorial look, the starkness and the lack of blending and the sort of... the more distinct blocks of colour can make such a difference to how the finished look appears. I'm just fluffing this on, just blending it out slightly. Checking that I've got the same shapes both sides, which I have, so that's cool. I don't know what you're all thinking. Why are you only doing green? Where's the purples? Ah, it's a coming. So 
It's Christmas, and we'll see which one gets here first, shall we? Hopefully this one, because this film's got to go up in it. What day is it today? This film's got to go up tomorrow. <laughs> right, I'm going to initially start off with this Oh My Glitter pigment called Candy Queen, which I'm hopeless at getting these jars open. As you can see, I haven't even used this one yet. So let's just. Ooh, oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. There's my patch of splash of pink that I want. Ooh. Right, let me get a <clears throat> setting spray. And this is a. Looks like it was a Jeffrey Morphe, but it's green at one end and pink at the other end, and it's just a flat sort of, I don't know, concealer brush maybe, or lip brush, I don't know. Now I always tell you, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Always go into a loose pigment with a damp brush. You get far less fallout that way, but you do need to expect fallout when you're using a loose pigment by virtue of the fact it's a loose pigment so I'm just gonna dip my brush in and just tap it off to try and minimise the amount of fallout that I get I'm just gonna grab a little mirror this side so I can look down into it because obviously I'm blind in this eye so if I close this eye not a lot of makeup happens. So you can see I've dipped that in and tapped off. This is a way of doing a cut crease without having to actually cut the crease because you've drawn your cut crease to start with. have discount code with both Blush Tribe and Oh My Glitter. The Blush Tribe one is not affiliated, the Oh My Glitter one is. But all of my discount codes are listed in my description box and they clearly state whether or not I earn from them. I do like working with loose pigments. I know it scares a lot of people, but it really shouldn't. It's, you know, you just have to go easy with it. I'm just going to mark on this side how far out I came, because where I've got such deep crease in here, where my eye was pulled around when I was a kid, and I mean like a five years old kid, it's left me with super deep creasing just here. And if I try and go in with a pigment or a shimmer or anything like that, it just sort of fills up the crease but doesn't actually adhere to the skin properly. It just sort of loosely packs into the crease and then as I blink and stuff through the day, I end up with it showering and cascading down my face, which if I've got a contact lens in, is not good. So do not do this with your eye unless you absolutely have to because you saw with my other eye I don't do this. But you can see by how far that went back in just how deep those creases are just there. Right. 
I could come a little bit further out, haven't I? Let's just take the pink a little further out this side. Just so that we match. Clean the brush off. Which of course is now stained. So as I said, this was from Oma oh Glitter, this one, and it's called uh, Candy Queen. Right, I'm going to grab my Hasina 2 back using the same brush. I'm going to go into Monique, but the brush is dry now and I'm going into it. Because I'm going into a pressed pigment. So I've packed pigment both sides of the brush. Now I'll spray it. Um, I do dry the ferrule off like this, just so you don't get any moisture coming down and loosening the bristles just there. And we'll add a little pop of lilac shimmer at this point, I think. Just buff that in nicely and blend it with the pink. I told you the purples were coming, didn't I? So again, I've just dried that brush off. Going back into Monique. This really is my favourite palette. I had kind of had to force myself to use other palettes for a while because all I wanted to do was use this one. Alright, now do the same on this one. Where the pink meets the lilac, and pull the lilac a little bit further out, like so. And then we're going to go in with quite possibly my favourite loose pigment ever, and it's a Blush Tribe pigment, and it was the first loose pigment I ever bought from Blush Tribe, which is why it's in this. Again, now if I, if this is the Neelum pigment, and you can see it goes from purple to green. So it's absolutely perfect for this look. So, I can wet the brush again. Dip into Neelum. Salma, the lady that owns Blush Tribe, actually had her car wrapped in um, a foil that gave the same effect as this pigment. I'm just going to pop this pigment on. I will tidy up the shaping with a pad with some micellar water on. 
little bit later. But right now I just want to get the pigment in a place. And then lightly drag the lilac onto the deep. Always drag a lighter pigment onto the deeper one. so pretty. Yes, I've got fallout because I didn't tap off very well. As I haven't done my base yet, it's really not a problem. And if you're wondering if it'll dust away, there's your answer. Right, I'm already wet the brush. Dip into Neelum. Again, of all of my loose pigments, this is the one that I've used the most. And just remember to take your time with this bit. Rushing it and ruining some of the shaping that we've been working so hard to achieve. And again, just drag the lilac across onto Neelum like that. really is that simple. So there's no need to be scared of working with loose pigments at all. There really isn't because if you imagine if you've got a um, if you've got an eyeshadow palette that has a lot of kick up and then you go back in and you pick up the kick up on your brush you're effectively picking up loose pigment. wait to see what Jessica's look is like. See what she's come up with. Right, I'm going to pause you briefly and I'm going to go and put some, ooh, nearly dropped the pigment, good start Ange. I'm going to go and put some foundation on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Uh, so please don't go anywhere. You will see me instantly and I will see you the very next time that I press the record button. And I am back. As you can see, I decided to go for purple brows because, well, I wanted to, to be quite frank. It's as simple as that. Right, I'm going to go with this flat top brush back into Hasina 2 and I'm going to go into Mohan which is the purple the only deep matte purple in here actually I'm 
gonna run this along the lower lash line on both eyes and try not to poke myself in this eye because no contact lens and uh, you find it's quite a long way off and I'm um, very much relying on muscle memory because I can't see how close this brush is getting to my eye regular viewers will know just how many times I've poked myself in the eye on film right cleaning the brush off And then the next brush I'm going to go in with, I love this brush, it's actually a Tarte brush, would you believe? And it's from the Graveyard Girl palette, the Swamp Queen. But I like it because it's flat topped, but it's chunky, so it's great for getting up underneath your bottom lashes. And I'm going to go in with Destiny, which is a lilac -y shimmer. And I'm just going to use that to soften and buff the lower lash line. Yes, I could go in with a matte colour, but I don't want to. I want to use a shimmer. Because when you buff a shimmer like this, you normally end up buffing away the shimmer particles. And you get left with the glorious base colour. And I love the colour of this shadow, so there. Love, 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 love. Right now, I have to decide upon a highlighter. Um, I think I'm going to go with. My Becca, one of the light chasing highlighters, this is Rose Quartz Flashes Seashell. Now obviously, I'm going to pop a little bit up under the tail of my brow, over the top of the green. but a very, very little. But it does have the benefit of turning that green ever so slightly teal, which is one of the colours in the picture. Colour theory, see? All comes to play. And then in a corner, and I always continue the colour under my tear duct just buff it in with whatever colour I run under my eyes. This brush is a, a lip brush that I bought from eBay about 10 years ago. But it is great for getting into your inner corner and for doing your, your brow highlight. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I bung more highlighter over my face stick some mascara and some lipstick on, do something with my hair and I'll be back with a final look. So I'll see you right now. I am back. I went for my L'Oreal, I'm sorry, my Maybelline Lash Sensational Lash Multiplying Mascara today. That was a lot of words. And for Lippy, I went for the Jeffree Star Area 51 from his, I can't even remember, I think it was summer last year, but don't quote me. No, because summer last year had the orange packaging. When was this? This must have been holiday last year. Yes, yeah, summer this year was the orange packaging. This must have been holiday 2018. Anyway, green lipstick because... Northern Lights. So, I will pop the picture back up there. What do you think? Do you think I've done an accurate depiction of 
of those. If you were doing this challenge, how would you have done it? Would you have done a sort of green smoky cut crease with shimmery pigments on the lid or would you have done something completely different? Let me know in the comments box below because I would love to hear your thoughts on how you would interpret this beautiful, beautiful photograph. So, if you're one of my regular 4F babies, please, please double check that you're still subscribed and that your notification bell is still rung because YouTube are still unsubscribing people against their wishes. Once you have checked that and maybe given this video a cheeky like and a bit of a comment, perhaps, a minute, perhaps even a share, I'm going to need you to go over to the beautiful Jessica and just check out exactly what look she has done using that photo as inspiration. Because you can bet your life she's done something absolutely amazing. Now I have linked her channel and her film in the description box just to make it easier for you to find her. Now I'm going to need you to go over say hi from everyone here in the former family and please be as nice to her as you always are to me. Now if you have arrived here from Jessica's channel, hi, hello, welcome. I'm a slightly nutty half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird who lives in the south of England, suffers chronic pain and could witter for Britain to be quite frank. I really hope you've enjoyed this film. If you've got this far through it, I'm guessing you kind of enjoyed it, maybe just a little bit. If you did, it'd be awesome if you too could hit that like button for me, drop me a comment, and maybe even think about subscribing to the channel. If you're not sure yet, and you want to watch more films, I've got an awful lot you can choose from. Uh, there's a whole folder full of all these photo collaborations, so you can go back and watch all of them. Completely binge watch, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, settle down and enjoy. Uh, but I really do hope that you would like to join the, uh, the ever-growing 4F family here, because we would all be delighted for you to come and enjoy the fun. Right. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.